It's a currency collapse, and the bank runs have started. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And we have front row seats to the collapse of a fiat currency, how central banks are responding, and why this is all happening. And for that, let's kick off the story. We're headed over to Bloomberg, who headlines that Russia wrecks financial defenses as curbs hit banks, markets, and central bank hikes rates, adds capital controls to calm the markets. And the Bank of Russia acted quickly to shield the nation's $1.5 trillion economy from sweeping sanctions that he hit key banks, pushed the ruble to a record low, and left Vladimir Putin, President Vladimir Putin, unable to access much of his war chest of more than $640 billion. The central bank had more than doubled its key interest rate to 20%, the highest in almost two decades, and imposed some controls on the flow of capital. And I want you to understand what's going on and why, because next month, we're going, or later this month, we're going to see the Fed possibly or highly likely to raise rates. And there's a big difference between what's going on in Russia and why the Fed's raising rates. Now, when you have a collapse in your currency, what is a central bank's response is going to be is try to pull all that currency or pull currency into the bank. So by raising their what is their equivalent of the federal funds rate to 20 percent, what are they trying to tell people to do that have rubles? Hey, go down to your bank and deposit it because we're going to pay you 20 percent interest. Now, if you imagine if that happened in, in the United States or Canada or Australia, if the central banks there rose rates to 20 percent, what are people going to do? They're going to take all their cash, they're going to sell their stocks, they're going to sell bonds, and they're going to toss all that money into the banking system, and they're doing it in an attempt to stabilize the currency. So I want you to see what's going on here in Russia and how they're trying to stabilize the currency. Now let's keep going on with the story because it was part of a barrage of announcements that eventually restored some calm after a route that pushed some of Russia and Euro bonds into distressed territory last week. So you can see it's already started to have some effect. In facing the risk of a bank run, a wrap itself in assets and the steepest depreciation in the ruble since 1998, policymakers banned brokers from selling securities held by foreigners starting on Monday on the Moscow Exchange. Exports were ordered to start mandatory hard currency revenue sales, and stock trading was temporarily suspended and probably be spend, suspended for a while in Moscow. And you know, so why do you see these bank runs? It's because if you're if you have the belief that your currency is become going to become worthless, what are you going to do? You're going to go down to the bank and you're going to draw as much as you can, and you're going to go buy stuff with it. You know, you're going to buy food, and you're going to buy precious metals, and you're going to buy commodities. You're going to buy hard assets. You're going to buy anything. In fact, it doesn't even matter as long as you get rid of that worthless paper and do it as quickly as possible. And then what happens to the people that receive that currency? Well, they don't want it, and so they're going to try to get rid of it as quickly as possible. And then the faster that money moves and circulates through the economy, it creates an inflationary spiral and the currency becomes worthless. And so what the central bank there in Russia is trying to do is get people to not do that and deposit their money into the banking system. And of course, the other reasons we talked in yesterday's show is there is not enough currency ever in a fiat system to cover all the debt. So if people pull out all the money, well, then you get a collapse in the banking system. So you can see the response here and what's going on. Let's can keep going. Going because the steps taken so far on Monday represent the most forceful measures by Russia after the latest round of sanctions, with the U.S. and European Union agreeing to block access of much of the $640 billion of the country's central bank has built up as a buffer to protect the economy. And so what you're seeing now is Western nations using you know, their tools of, to manipulate the economy and currency to try to keep you know, that war chest from actually being used. And this is important to understand what's going on. Now, all these measures should limit the depreciation of the ruble, uh, said an economist at Renaissance Capital in Moscow. If the run on FX or currency continues, we would anticipate additional direct restrictions on domestic operations. And in a sense, we, you know, what she's saying is, look, the Russian Central Bank is going to do everything it can. It's going to use all of its tools to keep the currency from becoming worthless. And so you're seeing, you know, what's going on here in Russia could be happening happening in other parts of the world at some point. And I want you to understand that central banks have a lot of tools and power and desire to keep their fiat currencies, well, to hold their value, or at least to have some value. Let's keep going on, because here you can see in this chart from Bloomberg that Russia more than doubles its key rate to shore up the ruble. And look at the price of the ruble here. You can see in black, it went vertical. And that's exactly you know what the intention was of these policies is to stabilize the currency. Let's keep going on. 
because the ruble's 24 drop, 24% drop so far this year is the worst slump globally. Price is compiled by Bloomberg Show. At current levels, the ruble slump is the biggest since 1998, and the year the nation's economy went into a tailspin and the government defaulted on local debt. And of course, you're starting to get a picture of why this is all happening and what the objective is, is to crash the Russian economy and get them to default on their debt, and that would cause an internal uprising. And you can see kind of how this all plays out and what's going on. Now, if you're concerned about a currency collapse outside of wherever you're watching this from and how that could affect the rest of the world and your portfolio, well, you shouldn't be worried about your portfolio being put to the test. Be sure to check out Portfolio Shield. It's a link in the corner and description below. You'll be glad you did. Let's keep going because here we see the next headline now. Russia's central bank more than doubles interest rate in response to sanctions. This is from Wall Street Journal. And what I want to point out is over the weekend, the ATM saw long lines of consumers made a dash for cash. And early Monday, the Russian ruble plunged around 20% to the dollar from around 83 last week, from 105 to 83. And so you get see now what's happening. So you're right over the weekend people are pulling money out central bank response says no go put it back we're going to raise rates really high go put that money back we need to stabilize the system and that you know, so you see what happens when you know consumers lose confidence in their currency what they do and now let's continue with the wall street journal then headlines blockade on russia central bank neutralizes defense against sanctions u.s says as follow-on sanction prevents moscow from selling foreign currency to prop up the ruble as central bank governor sees liquidity crisis. So what's going on here? is a coordinated action blocks from central bank from selling dollars, euros, and other foreign currencies in its reserve stockpile to stabilize the ruble. Now, how does this work? If you're trying to stabilize your, your currency, if that's your job is to stabilize a currency, and you have currencies from other countries that you're holding in your reserves, well, what would you do? Well, you would sell those currencies. So let's, let's, let's take a dollar, for example, and let's say I'm trying to defend the dollar and I have euros, so I could go out in the market and sell my euros and get dollars for it and then pull those dollars into the system and stabilize my currency. That's what they have, all why Russia has all these foreign currency reserves in an attempt to stabilize their currency. So what you are seeing now Western nations are doing is say, hey, we know what you're gonna do next, we're going to keep you from doing it. So let's see what happens here. Announcing the move on Monday, Washington in Washington before U.S. markets open, U.S. officials said they intended the sanctions to stoke already surging inflation and the actions against the Bank of Russia are intended in effect to neutralize the country's monetary defenses. In Fortress Russia will be exposed as a myth, said senior Biden administration official Monday, referring to Moscow's efforts in recent years to armor its economy against Western sanctions, including by amassing a $630 billion war chest of reserves at a central bank. And so what you're seeing is now a battle of fiat currencies as Western nations attempt to say, look, we don't care how much money you've got stockpiled, we're going to make sure that you can't touch any of it. And that is pretty powerful in terms Terms of a policy response and what's going on here. So a lot of people don't understand that what we're trying to do, the Western nations are trying to do, is make the ruble become worthless, collapse the Russian economy, and then, of course, end the desire to do anything because there's no economy left. And this is pretty interesting to see this all playing out you know, in real time. And let's go back to the Wall Street Journal now as we switch into the Fed and what this means for the upcoming Fed meeting here in the middle of March. As a Russia-Ukraine war risk, putting the Fed in, big, in a bigger bind as growing price pressures could compel officials to raise interest rates faster this summer. In public comments and interviews last week, Fed officials endorsed plans to lift rates at their March 15th to 16th meeting. They said it was too soon to tell how the war will affect the economic outlook, but they're monitoring developments carefully. Their problem is that they had anticipated U.S. inflation now running at a 40-year high to peak this quarter, and geopolitical developments that push up prices through the spring, particularly for energy and commodities, could force the Fed to accelerate rate increases this summer, which would raise the risk of a recession next year. So part of the reason you're seeing, you know, the Fed respond by raising rates is because there's this belief and this inaccurate belief, because we've discussed this on the show you know, repeatedly, that we're not seeing monetary inflation from, you know, central bank money printing. We're seeing supply chain inflation from, you know, the pandemic. So what the central bank is doing, because they can't look at, you know, the difference between the two, it's too difficult for them 
And all they're seeing in their data is, well, prices are going up and we've been running really loose monetary policy. So how, how do they deal with this issue? Well, how do you remove money from circulating around the economy? And in fact, in a similar fashion to what Russia is doing, but for completely different reasons, is you start to raise interest rates and that gets money to go into the banks. Of course, you know, there's a ton of money in the banks and we'll probably continue this story in the future. But there's already a ton of money sitting on deposit in commercial banks, even at low interest rates. Well, the Fed wants to try to raise that amount and slow down the economy. So they're not trying to crash it. They're just trying to slow it down. Of course, we know history says what really will happen. Now, back to Bloomberg, who headlines that global rate bets evaporate as traders ditch the half point Fed move. Remember, the Fed was supposed to raise rates 50 basis points, according to some experts here in a couple of weeks. And reality is that number is dropping fast as bonds rally across the curve as investors seek debt havens. Traders are casting aside wagers on rate hikes across the world, including pricing out unusually large Federal Reserve interest rate hike in March, amid concern that the fallout of Russia's invasion of Ukraine will weigh on on the growth outlook. And I want that's key, two words, growth outlook, because remember, interest rates are a function of two things, growth and inflation. So if growth outlook is falling, meanwhile, inflation out perspectives are still high. Imagine if we're seeing yields dropping now, what will happen when inflation expectations start coming down? Well, you get a picture and uh, they will come down a lot. And swaps linked to the Fed's March 16th mean price in just 24.3 basis points of tightening on Tuesday. So just traders don't even expect a full quarter point hike. A contrast from last month and a half point move was all but fully priced amid concern over accelerating inflation. And bonds rallied across Across the curve led by short term and here you can see the 30 year coming down at the time I took this screenshot for the show and all of this again comes back to the you know, growth and inflation expectations and people say yields can't go down well if growth expectations are falling enough to drive yields down wait till inflation expectations start coming down and that will even draw yields down even further and potentially as we might see down to zero across the curve. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Bye now. The content of this video is provides educational information only. It's not intended by investor advice. This year, I'll have to be construed as recognition or solicitation by a selling security financial instrument or participate in any particular trading strategy. This video was paired by Steve Van Meter. Personal capacity, pins expressed this video that I do not reflect the valid advising or Steve Van Meter Financial.